All right, Mines, let's talk about the Raiders here for a little bit. Look, free agency right around the corner. A lot of big news potentially around the corner for the Raiders and a lot of other NFL teams. But the Raiders have quietly made some, I think, really smart, sanity moves over the past couple of days. A lot of other teams have been in the news more than the Raiders. But I think the Raiders really took care of business. I think they're run being run a lot smarter than a lot of people think. Yeah, Nick. And seeing how the last couple years went for the Raiders, a lot of volatility, a lot of not so smart decision making and a lot of just things out of their control. The Raiders seem to have pulled everything back into their control. So that all looks really good. But things that are even more in their control are the moves that they're about to be able to make with free agency opening up here in just a few short days. That's why we want to ask the Raiders fans in the comments below. What kind of free agency moves are you eyeing? What do you think would be the best fit for this Raiders team? Let us know in the comments below. But Nick, let's go over some of the Raiders' successes in this offseason. Yeah, because so far what we've been hearing a lot in the news, right? You're hearing a lot about the trades, the draft trades, a lot of people moving around. Of course, you have the Carolina Panthers trading with the Bears, giving up a lot to move up to number one. Of course, you look at the New Orleans Saints signing former Raider Derek Carr to a big deal. Daniel Jones signs a big deal with the Giants. A lot of money flying around. And, you know, you know a lot of teams may be overspending, spending over their skis, getting themselves in bad situations. A lot of people thought the Carolina Panthers got absolutely fleeced. But the Raiders quietly have done one heck of a job managing the cap and making some really smart moves. The most recent instance of this is a reported first by Bleacher Reporters, where I first saw is that they restructured Max Crosby's deals. And this is from the report here. According to ESPN's Field Yates, the move will save the Raiders $7.5375 million. That's a lot of decimals against the salary cap. The 24, 25-year-old Crosby, who was a fourth-round pick out of Eastern Michigan in 2019 NFL draft, signed a four-year $94 million contract extension last year. And here was the interesting thing I found about this move, Mize, is that the Raiders, and I, this was reported about over the cap, the Raiders actually owed him that money anyway, and they're going to have to pay him that cash anyway this offseason. This was just giving him the cash today, giving the cash up front, and moving the salary cap space out into the forward years opening up some space this season so again this was not an, uh, an example of the Raiders restructuring to the point where they're giving Crosby money that they would not have had to owe him anyway this was guaranteed money essentially that was owed Crosby they just decided to pay it for uh, pay it to him now as opposed to extending it out to the future freeing up some cap space uh, for the here and now according to over the cap the Raiders actually have now the third most available cap space throughout the entire NFL with a pretty impressive $43.6 plus million dollars cap space. So the Raiders are in a strong position to make a lot of moves. Minus they, they've avoided some bad things, too. They let Denzel Perryman walk in for agency, a linebacker north of 30. They could have been tempted to try and overpay for him, give him a big deal. Nope, they made the more, smart decision and let him walk. I really like what the Raiders have been doing. Right? They haven't been doing anything bad. They haven't been being fleeced in any trades. They're making smart cap moves. They're in a strong position there, and they're not overpaying for some veteran players that are past their prime a little bit. They're quietly set up really nicely, and they're not doing anything dumb, which is usually the sign of a smart franchise. What do you think about the Raiders' minds and everything they're doing right now and the position they put themselves in? Yeah, Nick, you said it best. Smart moves. That's what they've been doing. And another sneaky smart move that I have the Raiders making is when they tag Josh Jacobs. Without yep. a new uh, superstar quarterback, you're going to need to lean on the running game. And they tag Josh Jacobs, who was the best running back in the NFL last year. You pay a premium for one year for a guy who has not passed his prime. He's in the peak of his career. And he did really, really well in your offense last year. And not only did they do that, Nick, but they backed it up by re-signing veteran running back Amir Abdullah just in case anything falls apart. Uh, you always nice to have a good veteran backup running back on the roster. So I really like that move that they make because I think it solidifies their offense going forward because as of this point, the Raiders don't have, you know, a hundred percent guaranteed future. I don't see them going after a big free agent quarterback. Could they could prove me wrong. And I don't see them being able to move up to the draft to get one of the premier uh, quarterback picks here. So I like the establishment of the running back room and being able to go into this season knowing that you might not have to rely on Stidham. Stidham might not have to be the guy 100% of the time. So I thought that was a really smart move by the Raiders. Mize, I'm glad you brought that up because I totally forgot about it. You're right. You hit the nail on the head there, man. It's the stupidest decision any franchise can do at this point is give a running back a long-term deal. No matter how good the running back looks, no matter how much of a star player he is, no, how matter, no matter how important he is to your offense, the worst decision you can make is lock him up to a long-term deal. And the Raiders were trying to negotiate with Jacobs. They're trying to do a team-friendly deal. Jacobs didn't want that, so they decided on the uh, franchise tag. 
Well, they try and figure out the rest of the contract. We'll see what happens. And because they only they didn't fall into temptation, they didn't do what Dallas did with Ezekiel Elliott, right? They didn't do what the Carolina Panthers did with Christian McCaffrey or, or the Saints did with Alvin Kamara to that matter as well. They didn't fall in that temptation of giving him an expensive long-term deal. The Raiders going into next season have the NFL's leading rusher at the price of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10th or 11th, according to this count here. So they have the NFL's arguably best running back, the leading rusher, at the 11th lowest cap hit, or 11th from the top cap hit. That is an outstanding deal, an outstanding bargain. And it's twofold, right? They keep their star player, which, of course, when you got a quarterback coming in, whoever it's going to be, you know, you need to have a running game to lean on, to your point. But they also didn't overpay for him, both in the short term and in the long term, in terms of the deal. And it's moves like these, Mize, and we've talked about a bunch of them right now, that show that Ziegler and company at the top of the Raiders organization are quietly doing things really smart and i know the wins and losses didn't work out last year but i talk about it all the time smart organizations win out in the end and i think if the raiders keep going down this track the wins and losses will follow and if i was a raiders fan i have to be excited about what i'm seeing from the front office so far